What a slate of week seven games it was in the NFL. Lions, Vikings, worth the hype. The Kansas City Chiefs, the lone unbeaten after seven weeks. Big Packers win. Deshaun Watson out. What's all that mean for the Cleveland Browns? And how about Russ versus Rodgers and so much more coming at you right now. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson bring you expert NFL analysis every day in less than 30 minutes. Get an inside look at the NFL on the field and in the front office with elite breakdowns to next level analysis and in-depth information only for the real NFL fans. This is Peacock and Williamson, and it starts now. Welcome to the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock alongside Matt Williams at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL. Thanks everybody for making us your first listen right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Love our everydayers and uh, welcome to all the new listeners as well. Please subscribe on YouTube or wherever you are listening to this podcast so you don't miss an episode all season long and all off season long here at Peacock and Williamson. Today's episode of PNW is brought to you by Hillsdale College. Go right now to hillsdale.edu slash locked on to enroll. There's no cost, and it's easy to get started at Hillsdale College. All right, Matt. Um, I think we got to start with what was the game of the week kind of going in here in the NFC with the NFC North and the two probably teams that have played the best so far this year, maybe in the NFL, definitely in the NFC, and it was Lions, Vikings, and wow, was it, was it worth the hype? It was a phenomenal game, and it was the Detroit Lions that came out on top 31-29, and now both Lions and Vikings at 5-1. Huge win here for the Minnesota Vikings, or for the uh, Detroit Lions to beat the Vikings and help themselves not only in the NFC, uh, one seed race, but obviously they have that head-to-head now against the Vikings in the NFC North. Yeah, and... <laughs> The stats don't always tell the the whole story, of course. And, you know, the, the Lions had the ball last, kick a field goal to win it, and they needed it bad. The Vikings, to me, are still a really good team and the surprise of the, of the league and still a high-quality opponent. They're not the Saints after two weeks or anything like that. But I thought, man, this is a really equal game. Was there a couple things, you know, penalties, time of possessions, turnovers that really swayed – one team or the other. Well, those three categories were like dead even. And I just feel like they played this game a hundred times. It might be 50, 50, you know, it was a really, really good game. Goff played extremely well and handled all the brutal things. that Flores throws at you, the stars all came to play Jones, Jefferson, Gibbs, St. Brown, really good playoff type football. Absolutely. It was good on good. Uh, there was this the Sam Darnold interception was a huge one in this game. Was. And, and Goff has been probably one uh got I mean three for the last three weeks, Goff's been the best quarterback in the NFL. I think you're right. I really do. And it's not just game manager or product of the system. I mean yeah, and big plays over the top to Amonra St. Brown, who had eight catches for 112 yards in the in the long touchdown here. Um, 22 of 25 passing for Goff. He was perfect a few weeks ago. I mean, it's been ridiculous. The efficiency has been off the charts and they're making big plays too uh, in the passing game on offense. And what, what was fun about this game was just the flow because, you know, all Vikings in the first quarter, all Lions in the second quarter, and you come out in half and it's tight and then the Vikings take a lead. And then, as you mentioned, the uh, the field goal to win it for the, for the Lions there, 31-29. So just a really fun football game. Two really good football teams. Um, and you mentioned Goff in the in the blitz. Brian Flores' defense is interesting because he shows pressure like ninety nine percent of the time, but he doesn't <laughs> yeah. always bring pressure. So it's and and you've really seen a lot of that around the NFL and um t- because there's so and, and Sims Sims is that? the hot word nowadays. Yeah, yeah Sim pressures and what you see is is you know uh, the the league adjusting to the league. So what does every team in the NFL do now? Especially all of the you know Shanahan offshoot offenses. Well, they they run a lot of play action and they they have a lot of motion to try to figure out what you're doing pre-snap. Well, with all the sim pressures, what the defenses are doing is like, okay, well, guess what? Erase all that because we're going to change the picture of what you think you see post-snap, pre-snap. It's going to be different post-snap. So just muddying up the picture a little bit and then you still have to 
get pressure, if you bring pressure, and then you have to cover behind it still. Because if you just bring pressure and the offense has an easy answer, then they're just going to find that easy answer and you get beat. But that's not what's happening right now with Brian Flores' defense. We're seeing that a lot around the NFL, but none more so than the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, and one way of looking at it is it's kind of like doing the offensive protections, what's been done to defenses for years. You know, everyone's heard the term, let's try to put that linebacker or cover player in conflict, you know, run a high, low route, and he's got to pick one of the two, and you're wrong. And yeah, and you have to be right, and oftentimes there is no right answer. Well, they do that to guards now. You know, they do that to tackles now. You know, I mean, it's crazy. They have a lot more difficult time changing on the fly. And I was going this way. Whoops. I'm already starting going this way. I can't get this thing unhitched. That's the the back cross of my face. I can't run, you know. It's crazy, though. And Flores (laughs) is really good at dropping unorthodox players in the spots you don't expect them. The Van Ginkles of the world. I mean, Pace with the uh, return to one for a score, like he's been phenomenal. And so, yeah, a lot of that is like this guy is a pass rusher. No, he's in coverage. No, he's good against the run. No, he's he can, has range as a tackler. So, yeah, it's it's fun to watch. They throw a lot at you. And was it Purdy that since you know was kind of gave him a big compliment after the yeah, Vikings it, win? It, it was it was caught on the microphone at post game and it was kind of dapping him up and he's like man you kind of had your defense your your scheme is crazy or something like that you it's, know yeah, yeah it's bonkers or something right, you know? yeah. and it is i mean it was just it can't deny that yeah one, one guy we throw out there now we're having this conversation i know we have so much to get to today and i apologize in advance if we don't spend an hour on panthers commanders but there's some games we might not get to today yeah so. but josh metellus is one of the keys though to this viking defense and i know the lions won but there's been so many players in history, the Isaiah Simmons, that he could play linebacker, he could play free safety, he could play slot corner, but really doesn't do any of them well. Josh Metellus does all of them well, and no one even knows who he is. I mean, a five-year guy out of Michigan. Yeah, I think, and and that's really the story of the Vikings team yeah. here. Is because These type of guys. We, we, didn't, we were a bit, we're like, ah, maybe they'll be battling for the seventh seed in the wild card. They've been the best team in the league through seven weeks. And, or, yeah. or, um, top Three certainly teams. in the conversation, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe still, but um, it, you know, and we didn't really the, we didn't know what the names are going to look like and uh on the field, and uh, they've looked great on the field, so absolutely the Vikings right. there. Uh, but big yeah, win by the Lions there. there, it gives 116 yards on the ground, two touchdowns. Uh, Montgomery getting deemed a lot of injuries this week, by the way, too. So the oh. things getting serious around the NFL, and things getting a little chaotic as well around the league. Yeah, teams like your Niners getting hit hard all at once. And, I mean, it's, oh, yeah. the, the injuries aren't much fun to talk about, but we're going to have no. to. We are going to have to, uh, especially what's going on in Cleveland. might be one of the rare, like, positive spins on an injury, potentially. Um, yeah. for, oh, for I just the- mentioned Martellus. I mean, I, I think i got to throw Brian Branch out there from the winning team, too. Oh, yes, I mean, yes. I love that guy, and he does everything well. Phenomenal. Unbelievable game. And people talk about him as defensive player of the year. I mean, he's just uh, – just a perfect modern day player that can do a lot for a defense. It's mm-hmm. so smart. He can play deep. He can play up against the lines, good against the run, good against the pass. Uh, phenomenal. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. The Green Bay Packers victorious. Oh, staying in the North here. Uh, the Green yeah. Bay Packers victorious 24, 22 at home over the Houston Texans did a number on CJ Stroud in this game. And um, uh, Jordan love, some phenomenal throws. He was 24 of 33, three touchdown passes in this game and a uh, big win by the Packers who were nipping on the heels at five and two of both the, the lions and the Vikings right now. I mean, this NFC North is going to be fun. It really is. And I, I think green Bay's right there too. is one of the best teams in the league. Um, things aren't just right with Houston though. I mean, it, it's always one thing or another, and you can't just tell me Nico Collins, who might've been a best receiver in the league this year when he got hurt being out should derail them this much. You know, like Tank Dell getting zero fantasy points shouldn't happen. You know, you shouldn't average 3.4 yards per play when you have Dell and Diggs and Schultz and a high-priced line and Mixon's in there. You know, I mean, like the running game's always better with Mixon. Like something's missing in Houston. And I'm not saying their hotshot coordinator is losing some of his luster, but I'm throwing it out there. (laughs) 
Yeah, uh, uh, they're they're going to have to adjust the adjustments. So we'll see yeah. uh, we'll see what happens there for that Texans offense. But yeah, something as they've been winning, something's been a, just a little bit off, and, and and even their wins have been kind of tough to come by. Uh, and I think we've seen that from a lot of teams. We've seen that from the Kansas City Chiefs, who are still unbeaten, even though all yep. their wins are like, yeah, they're just kind of getting by. But they are the best team in the NFL at getting by and coming out on top and getting the win. So we'll talk Chiefs, 49ers, uh, the Cleveland Browns. Great news there with Chubb coming back, Watson with the Achilles. Could that potentially help them not only win more games, but answer some questions for them going forward at the quarterback position, Russ versus Rodgers, and so much more coming up on this post-week seven Sunday edition of Peacock and Williamson. This episode of Peacock and Williamson sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. October is the season for wearing masks and costumes, but some of us feel like we're wearing a mask all the time and hide more often than we really want to at work, social settings, even around our own family. Therapy can help you learn to accept all parts of yourself so you can take off that mask because masks should be for Halloween fun, not for our emotions. And sometimes you just need that weekly check-in with a therapist. Make sure you're hitting the small goals in your life every single week uh, to help you attain those big goals that you want to achieve. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. And all you do is you fill out a brief questionnaire at betterhelp.com slash locked on, and you get matched with a licensed therapist. Super easy. And you know, if you don't hit it off with your therapist, that's okay. It happens. You can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. So take off the mask with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on today. Get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on. The next segment of Peacock and Williamson brought to you by Hillsdale College. Time is our most precious commodity, so don't waste it scrolling through the same mind-numbing content for hours and hours. How can you spend it wisely to improve yourself? Our sponsor, Hillsdale College, is offering more than 40 free, that's right, free online courses, including Introduction to Free Market Economics, The Great American Story, A Land of Hope, uh, The Rise and Fall of the Roman Republic, and uh, uh, so many more history, economics. Uh, have you been studying these things? Uh, how you, Have you been uh, checking in with time and technology and looking in the past to learn about the future? Well, you can at Hillsdale College. All of Hillsdale's courses are self-paced, so you can start whenever and tune in wherever. Plus, you can go deeper with readings, quizzes, discussions, or just enjoy the lectures. Go right now to hillsdale.edu slash locked on to enroll. There's no cost. And it's easy to get started. That's hillsdale.edu slash locked on to register. Hillsdale.edu slash locked on. Where do we go next? How about let's let's go to the Sunday Nighter, which was uh, another oh, interesting right. game. And I know you were really plugged into that game. And the Russell Wilson led Steelers. Putting up 37 points of offense. The offensive juggernaut that is the Steelers. 37 points on Aaron Rodgers' uh, New York Jets. The Jets now, after trading for Devontae Adams, this is kind of the disaster scenario we talked about with this trade. It's like, okay, you're going all in with yeah. the team. Three games under 500 now if you're the Jets. Getting blanked on offense in the second half. 37-15. Uh, we can talk Rodgers. I want to start with uh, a team that's better with Russell Wilson, clearly than it was with uh, with Justin Fields, I think. And it was a tough decision. And Mike Tomlin, I think, after the game, said something to the effect of, that's why I get paid the big bucks. <laughs> <laughs> it really was, right. He was kind of feeling himself a little bit because I was one of the few actually around here that, that was a proponent of it. I thought Wilson clearly made them better. Fields is a crowd favorite. People want him to be the quarterback for the next 10 years. And I get that. And Fields is really easy to root for and a super kid. And he played pretty well. But for a lot of the reasons that I thought, Wilson makes the offense much better. I mean, he's a better deep passer. He's better off play action. He's a better red zone passer. It's just and easier. I, Things always it's just easier. easier. Yep. It's yeah. so difficult with Justin Fields sometimes. And it's taking that free candy. And it's something that you would think is easier. That That's the frustration with Fields all along. It's like, man, is he going to be a bad quarterback? How, how can he not learn the easy stuff that all backup quarterbacks are good at? But he's so good at these other things that you can't teach. And it's so yep. frustrating. And Russell Wilson's the vet comes in. It's like, yeah, look, here's some easy stuff. Look, this guy's open. I'm going to throw it to him and get, get the ball out quickly. And even though he's not the quickest time to throw a quarterback everything just yeah. seems so much easier watching the Steelers offense with Russell Wilson 100 percent. and there was 
uh, tr trust me, I don't know if, if I'm not privy to the Steelers play calls, but I guarantee there was eight plays that he changed at the line of scrimmage, got him in a good play and picked up eight yards. You know what I mean? Less mm -hmm. veteran stuff, Flacco stuff, you know, stuff that guys have played a lot of football can do in their sleep, you know, and it, it, that makes all the difference. And then Steelers haven't had that since Ben and uh, they were the more physical team. They beat the crap out of the jets in the second half. And I've been pushing this all over Twitter. I mean, the Steelers have a plus 68 second half point differential. You know, like they are clamping teams down and they are just beating people up in the second half, mostly because of physicality. And they block a kick every week. <laughs> That's phenomenal. See, everybody, <laughs> everybody was hyped for the special teams coach on the sideline. And so, yeah. Vibe oh, I know Danny well. Danny's the best. Yeah. We actually saw him at the cafeteria on Thursday and. We're joking with him. We're like, Coach T is going to be expecting you to get a kick block every week. He's like, he already does. He yells at me every week. We don't get one. You know, like <laughs> just joking, of course. You know, uh, but Funny all things Steelers looking good at five and two, flying high. Vibes are good, and if they're going to get better quarterback play, the defense is already there. Uh, physicality, yeah. and so Steelers are in a really good spot right now. Jets are absolutely not in a good spot right now. Two and five. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to double and sometimes triple Watt every play. The other guys are starting to feast, and I would be worried if I'm the Jets. Like, I felt this was sort of a must win for them. I picked them to win. Now they have a bunch of secondary injuries, and you're two and five, and O line is still so so, but they came out hot, and now you're two and five. I mean, you have all your chips pushed in. It looks like a losing hand. Oh, no doubt. Uh, I, I hate where the, the Jets are right now. I, to yeah. be honest, with you, I think the Jets should flip Devontae Adams. It's like, okay, you got him early enough to right, right. him in a couple of weeks before the deadline. And if you're Devontae Adams, I wonder if that was part of it. It's like, hey, Leave this doesn't go well. Can you send me the – yeah, just send me the other guys. <laughs> where I should have gone anyways. I was trying to decide between these two teams. Should have waited, man. If you're Devontae Adams, you definitely make a difference. If Like, let's say it was between those two teams or maybe the Bills. You, you probably make a dis different decision if you just wait a week. Yeah, they're on a four-game losing streak now. Unless it doesn't matter. You just want to go hang out there in Rodgers and, you know, Rodgers. Yeah, they kept talking about how he's living in his house and they're having fun and driving in together. Yeah. That's cool. But Russell Wilson was the better quarterback. Yes. With, yes. with not as good receivers. And I mean, at the, halftime, I didn't think that. You know, Wilson was a little rusty and Rodgers yeah. was better. In the second half, it wasn't even close. Uh, Pickens, by the way, is a, is a buy in your fantasy leagues with Russell Wilson. That's yes. a combination, which is why I drafted Pickens everywhere. And it was kind of a little weird uh, to start the year. But, I mean, that's a perfect combination of strength and strength with quarterback and, and receiver with George Pickens, who's you know, they're, they're dead through down straight. He's going to be the clear number one going forward for that Steelers offense. I still think they should be in the receiver market. Cooper Cup Absolutely. or who you know whatever. Uh, did Mike Williams get on the uh, – or did, did Mike Williams get on the plane to go home with the Jets? Maybe yeah, I'm not giving you a lot for him, though. Yeah, I'm done shopping if I pick up Mike Williams. <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs> um, let's go to the the Kansas City Chiefs who defeated the 49ers 28 yeah. 18. And this game was uh, not even as close as the Super Bowl was. The, this was pretty much all Chiefs. The 49ers off like the, the Chiefs defense is is leading this football team. Patrick, there was five combined interceptions and zero touchdowns thrown by Brock Purdy and Patrick Mahomes in this game. And Mahomes did make a couple of plays. He had the sideline scramble, which I'm not going to get into. I'm already, uh, people are already mad at me on the internet because I, I'm, I get annoyed by the whole, like, I'm going to run out of bounds. Nope, just kidding when everyone slows down. Oh. So, let's not treat Mahomes like he's prime Gale Sayers because he uses the sideline. Smart player for sure. And like, look, if that's the rules, then then utilize that. But uh, but it's just those little things that, that Mahomes is able to make plays and make enough plays to win these football games where, Things haven't looked like super easy for the the Chiefs, but here they are, six and zero, beating every team that that uh, that comes their way, including the 49ers here. And it's it's really their defense. And Steve Spagnuolo's done a phenomenal job and did a phenomenal job in this game. And uh, there was uh, there, I think both defenses were really good in the first half, and then it kind of started to get away from the 49ers late, and their defense was on the field all the time because the Niners couldn't stay on the field on offense. It sounds like you're going to get bad Ayuk news. Debo was sick. McCaffrey, yeah. of course, isn't coming back any you know any minute now. Who knows? I don't, I'm guessing on that. After the bye, November, yeah, you know, week ten maybe for for Christian McCaffrey, and you know, just the unfortunate Debo just kind of got sick. I, I don't know what the illness is, but that was weird. It wasn't like it didn't look good. 
Yeah, they had to give him oxygen and like put a fan on him. It's like, what? Is that? What kind of illness is that the prescription for? But uh, get him yeah, away from the rest of the team. Yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> I don't want what he has. Yeah. Um, then, uh, yeah, Ayuk is. It's a, we'll find out probably any minute here. He's getting an MRI this morning, Monday morning. A feared torn ACL. So you know the rookie Ricky Pearsall might maybe has to pick up some slack and get Juwan Jennings back. They've still got a lot of weapons. They should be fine. Um, but uh, the, the the Chiefs defense is just phenomenal, really, really good, and, uh, and that's the story. So Mahomes doesn't even have to; he doesn't have to be great, but he always makes enough plays every week for the Chiefs that's, to win. That's football. where I was going to go. I wanted to focus on that because the defense is great. Tom Brady must have said ten times during that broadcast, Mahomes might not be putting up the best numbers anymore, but he's turning the corner and knowing exactly what it takes to win. You know, he paraphrased that over and over. You know, he, He's the best quarterback in the league of knowing what it takes to win. And not that he's been bad at that in the past, but like the the EPA nerds will tell you the Chiefs are like remarkably good. If it's third and six, they get seven. If it's first and 10, yeah. they get 11. You know, like they don't get 50, but they're always moving the chains. They're always getting just enough and not by design, but that's really good quarterbacking too. And yeah, and and the defense gives the ball back to the offense. So even yeah, though yeah. Hunt only you know averaging a yard and a half per carry in the first half, keep giving the ball back to him. Keep giving the ball back to him. Eventually, the dam breaks a little bit, and you end up putting the ball in the end zone a couple of times on the ground, uh, including a rushing touchdown for Patrick Mahomes. And so, uh, yeah, Kansas City Chiefs now in the driver's seat, six and zero atop the. They're AF. like the su- success rate champs, you know, like they just have successful plays, but not explosives. Yeah, it's like bad teams get four yards on third and seven, and the Chiefs get eight yards on third and seven. Mm-hmm. Somehow, you know. All right, next, uh, we're going to finish up this episode. We're not going to touch on every game, but I think some really big storylines with the Cleveland Browns who fall to the Bengals 21-14, yeah. but really the story there is what's going on at quarterback and – um uh, carry some stuff over tomorrow too yeah it's, i mean get, get, get those mailbag questions in by the way for your specific team if there's some storylines we did not get to on today's episode of uh, peacock and williamson uh, we'll finish up next there's still uh, a lot of good stuff a lot of good meat left on the bone from week seven the final segment of this episode is brought to you by FanDuel america's number one sports book nfl fans can start big and get that return on FanDuel of $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. And all you got to do is place your first $5 bet for those new customers at FanDuel. And to do it, just go to FanDuel.com. And when you get a hunch, let's say you're watching Monday Night Football this week, and in the middle of the game, you want to check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more. Well, you can find it all on the very same page where you're placing your bets at FanDuel.com. Of course, all of the weekly lines in the NFL, tons of prop bets, uh, you can get informed at uh, FanDuel.com on some future bets you might want to make. Maybe you got a different idea on who's going to be the Super Bowl champion this year, offensive, defensive players of the year, rookies of the year. Every sport imaginable, you can get in on all of the action at FanDuel and get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just go to FanDuel.com or download the app to get America's number one sports book. That's FanDuel.com. Let's move on to the Deshaun Watson conversation in the Cleveland Browns. And um, you don't want to wish injury on people, but I think the Cleveland Browns and Deshaun Watson, where it looks like he's going to have surgery on his torn Achilles, might be the best thing to happen to this organization because it answers some questions. But what was insane about this, I'm watching the game and thinking, okay, Jameis Winston. We we had an idea that maybe Jameis Winston would be the better quarterback for this team. And then he's inactive for the game. I so don't know why, right? It's Dorian Thompson Robinson and some Browns fans are telling me that it's because they, they were tired of the the fans chanting for Jameis Winston to be in the game. So they made oh, him inactive, yeah. which is just insane if that's you really can't the do case. That. Right. Um, and then DTR gets hurt, so they have to go emergency quarterback. And the one drive where Jameis, and Jameis Winston's on the field confirmed all those thoughts. And it was by far the best drive of quarterback play the Browns have had all season. And the question is, do you want Jameis Winston to win more games for the one and six Browns uh, if it if it does look that way? And, and then the other thing with Deshaun Watson is this is 
the best possible outcome for the Cleveland Browns because they've got injury insurance on Deshaun Watson. So they save money now with him being on the shelf and they don't have to rush him back. And they also have to make other decisions at quarterback. Now they're forced to do it because they have no mm-hmm. choice and they can't play Deshaun Watson for the next, you know, whatever, at least few months and maybe 12 to 15 months. Our buddy Mike Sando wrote about this in his pick six column today. And I mean, how about this? I mean, by season's end, Watson will have missed 33 of a possible 52 games due to 11 due to suspension, 22 due to injury since acquired by the Browns. I mean, missed 33 out of 52. I mean, and you're right. I mean, at least Chubb is back. They can get back to playing that style of Browns football. I want to see Winston just like you. I mean, it's bizarre to me that he's not the two just because the fans might chant his name or whatever. I mean, come on. That's <laughs> insane. Grow a pair, man. Come on. Be a coach. You know, yeah. lead the team. But yeah, you're right. I mean, there are going to be changes, and I think that's all anybody wanted. Absolutely. Uh, Nick Chubb, awesome to see him back. A rushing touchdown in yeah. this game. So look, competent quarterback play. They still have pieces on the defensive side of the ball. You get Chubb back. I mean, I, I wouldn't necessarily love to play that Browns team. No, I think they're better now. You know, like, again, everything's in the Steelers for me. I mean, the, the Steelers haven't played the Browns yet. I wish they would have. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. Yeah, you that, you know. You two of those instead of two of the other Browns. Exactly. exactly. Seven years. It's a great point. Uh, the, the Eagles tear up the, the Giants 28 to three. Ooh. A little. Uh, Revenge game for Saquon Barkley, 176 yards on the ground. And, uh, you know, really kind of a a type of game the Eagles needed against the New York Giants there. Uh, I'm just going to kind of run through a few here. Uh, The the Washington Commanders is uh, a big one, not because of the the actual game, 40 to 7. The Commanders are putting 40 points up on everybody, so I shouldn't be surprised they were able to do it to the the lowly Carolina Panthers. Uh, 40 to 7 win, but I want to point this out. And we talk about, chaos the national chaos league i call it sometimes the two highest graded passers according to pro football focus so far can you guess which two quarterbacks those are we just talked this, about one. this just this week uh this week yes yeah not counting monday night football which hasn't happened yet well it must be mariota you wouldn't be bringing it up i would imagine because yeah. it isn't andy dalton it's and marcus mariota and Jameis winston wow i was gonna say maybe russell wilson <laughs> somebody else we did yeah, yeah. Russ might not be too far down the list uh, actually, so uh, that that's that's the league we cover, Matt. The you come into week seven and the two highest graded passers. Now it's a small sample, but this week, not, uh, Marcus Mariota and Jameis Winston. It, it's that's pretty awesome. unbelievable where we're at uh, in, in in week seven and what can happen in this league. And um, the you, you look at a team and the, the the big story with the Commanders. Sorry, bearing the lead is their young quarterback, Gene Daniels, who's hurt he was smiling and on the sideline in sweats. And that, so I think that's going to work itself out and maybe he misses a game and they've got a bye week coming up. So that the good news there, I think on Jaden Daniels. The only takeaway I could have is if you told me 24 hours ago that the commanders are going to win 40 to seven, I would have hoped I got more than five points out of Jaden Daniels. In fantasy. <laughs> and fantasy is like, gosh, dang it. Right. Like that's the best matchup ever. You get five points out of your starting quarterback and they put up 40 against the worst team on the planet. <laughs> yeah. It tells you all you need to know about both teams though, right now. You know, <laughs> they didn't even need them. Uh, no doubt. Um, I mean, a ton of games we weren't able to get to here. I don't know if you have any other big takeaways that you want to, you know, the foul, uh, the Seahawks. Um, Seahawks was a huge win. Yeah. Uh, to me, that's the biggest game we didn't touch on. I thought Gino was awesome in this game. And I think a huge key with Seattle is how healthy is that young athletic defensive line? You know, they're a big play offense. Walker's a star. Metcalf hopefully avoided injury. They got dudes. But when Geno's hot, he's hard to beat. And when that D-line is healthy with, you know, Murphy and those guys, they can be a handful. Completely different. It's not just the Seahawks. Any NFL team, you are a completely different team if you've got a high-level defensive line versus – you know, yes. a scrub defensive line. Like there's, there's no bigger obvious uh, factor in changing how a football game is going to go. If you just can't play up front and you're non-functional, that's what the Seahawks were without all those guys and getting some of those players back is huge. Hall had a, a massive play in this one. He's been hurt. So um, yeah, big time uh, on the, the London game early tank Bigsby running all over yeah. him, a new running back one for the Jacksonville Jaguars who've won a couple games now 
and it is against the Patriots, but Drake may not looking terrible. Um, 26 of 37, 276 passing yards for Maine, a couple touchdown passes. I, I think we said this last week. I mean, this was a, a great win for the Patriots. You just keep losing and your quarterback's good and yeah. identify problems and fine. And, you know, we're, I, I think trade deadline is going to be fun this year. I mean, ATN should be a guy teams kick the tires on. You know, I mean, yes. they're not going anywhere. And I thought Lawrence was quite good. I mean, Evan Ingram helps him quite a bit. Lawrence, Lawrence to me, has had a rough go of it for a while, but I, he could be my quarterback. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, Bills over the Titans, 34-10. Uh, Colts defeat the Dolphins, 16-10. Some ugly quarterback in that one. Rams over the Raiders, Aiden O'Connell hurt. So going back to Minshew, at least for the, the time being there for the Raiders who are in a bad spot and uh, the Rams able to get their second win of the year, 20 to 15. I think that's all the games. Well, at least we, at least we mentioned them all now. We did. It should have just thrown out there that we talked to Browns, but that was a huge win for the Bengals too, just to get that win and get back in the mix too. You know, I just want to throw that out there. Uh, if you've got any questions about this week or next week or any of the massive storylines around the NFL right now, hit us up. On Twitter at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL. Drop a question on YouTube and subscribe while you're there. Matt and I back tomorrow. Right here, Peacock and Williamson. <laughs>